Oh. Mm, mm, mm. Hey, good morning, y'all. Good afternoon. Good evening. And welcome, welcome, welcome to this mental house with me, your host, Khadija. As you know, as soon as I get ready to make a video, this always happens. So, uh, I'm going to act like <laughs> I can continue without paying any attention. In fact, let me just give this dog a treat. Hello, hello, hello. I'm back. Okay, y'all. You know, I got to get into some real serious stuff today with you, family. A lot of y'all, especially the brothers, they don't want to talk about this type of stuff, right? Because it's really easy to go blame, 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 blame women, blame men, blame women, blame men. But the key, in my opinion, the bottom line is, uh, who and what constitutes a toxic parent? Now, from the man's side, it's very important that you not blame everything on the mama. <laughs> well, their mama is a funky, you know, or the mama didn't do blah, blah, blah. Or I made a mistake when I was blah, blah, blah. And maybe all those things could be true. But your child is the sum of both parts. And it is impossible for you to ask, because you and her mother are separate entities. It's really toxic. And somewhat abusive for you to try to get your child to play sides. Whether you know what should be happening or not. Because guess what? They're the sum of both parts. They can't make a decision regard, um, regarding one or the other. They're both. So when I hear Y'all know how I feel about Corey Hope because, you know, I, you know, actually he is more, you know, um, like my younger brothers, they're around his age. And I find myself having a lot of conversations with them uh, or I did a lot um, regarding the, the relationship between the parent and the child and how many brothers just absolve themselves with regarding their children's emotional uh, situation, right? Now, the first thing we're going to start with is were you absent? <laughs> were you absent? And did your, your your child have to see you on the weekends or when they could or whenever that? Okay, because to you, you might have all kinds of reasons why you did that. But dealing with a child's mind, if you haven't thought about how a small mind sees that, then you're missing the point. Because they can't rationalize all the things that you can. They just know that you're absent. Okay? So, the, the uh, uh, and even if you can't be, what, does, what is a hallmark of a father and daughter relationship? What does it look like? Um, every great parent-child relationship is an adult who is actively interested and involved in their child's life. Being involved is more than just asking about their day. It's, it's mean, it, it, it's like taking an interest in the things that excite and inspire them. Um, trying to get to know them as a person. Not just as your 
uh, offspring because they come through you. They're not you. They belong to God. They belong to the universe. But they came through you. So your job is to give them a good guide and a good roadmap. And I'm not saying none of us are perfect. Look, I wasn't the perfect parent. I understand this. But what I tried to do was be, I'm going to give you an example. I'm going to give you an example. A lot of women can say I was there for my ch child because I had to raise him. I had to raise him. But one of the reasons why I have a problem with Men spread and they see so far because emotionally it's impossible for you to give your children. I don't give a damn if you got finances. That's why that stuff with Nick Cannon is so pathetic to me. And it's a totally different um, uh, 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 situation than looking how that relationship looks on the African continent. Because every child on the African continent that has the same father, it is a difference. It is a difference, okay? Because you got everybody bigging up the dad, right? And not only that, the one woman picked the other woman. And I think we went into that before. But when that's not the situation, one of those children are left wondering why he liked that child's mama better than he, than he liked my mama. All these things happen because they are the sum of both parts. And if you could get people to understand that, maybe they would think a little further before they start having some damn kids. Because a lot of us who are parents don't need to be. Because we're not emotionally ready and to give that kid and was never emotionally ready to give those kids what they are going to be equipped with to need to be emotionally healthy for the rest of their lives. See, and the other counterpart of ours, they know how to do that, but they didn't teach us nothing but how to have slave uh, plantation behavior when it comes to our children. See, when you see a real man, you know that he knows that it's important to have all his seeds in a situation where he can be responsible for them. Not scattered all over the world like a uh, 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 tumbleweeds. All of y'all that say y'all respect Farrakhan, he got one wife, he's got Khadija, and all his babies were by her. Okay? That's one of the things that made people look at Elijah Muhammad as unhealthy. Not because of the great lessons that he taught, but Sister Clara Muhammad and 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 him didn't defy the relationship that Wallace D and and um you know had to experience. It wasn't it's hard to have that type of relationship being born and bred in America. Okay? Now I would just say he did the best he could, but a lot of his children did not like the situation. Okay? Whereas you look at Farrakhan, all his children is by one woman. Okay? There are a lot of women today who make a decision not to have uh, a lot of kids by a lot of different men and not to have a, di a whole bunch of different milk up in their bodies. Carrying other men's sperm from, it's really like they unload their trash in you and make you a, a dumpster for their cum. We don't want to talk about that because there's a responsibility that go with that. Now, I know y'all don't like what I'm talking about, but it's really it's important to understand that we set up these toxic families. And then when we get we get mad and then we want to talk about the mother or the father. But they were emotionally not unavailable and toxic from the beginning. It says, um, emotionally unavailable fathers have a negative impact on their children in many ways. These fathers often prioritize material things, other people, 
and their work over their children. Now, I want to just suck on that for a minute because a lot of people don't think it's important because as long as they bring money in, as long as they bring money in, see, so they can get material things. And so they, I got to work, I got to work, but they don't understand. They don't understand. I'm not talking about the relationship and you shouldn't be slanging dick anyway if you hate the mother that bad. See, these are all emotional choices and mental choices that you make. Because one of the most sickest things to me is a black man, a white man, any kind of man. Matter of fact, I'm sorry. I don't even hear white men saying this. So I'm going to say black men talking about she went down there and put child support on me. Oh, my God. Oh, God, help me. How far have we sunk? You make a baby. You don't she you don't support the baby at all. <laughs> Cause you got things to do and make it happen, bitch. And she goes to get help. And she identifies you as the father. So they come after you for child support and you get angry. Instead of figuring out how to work that shit to y'all advantage. You understand what I'm saying? See, so you're not going to absolve yourself with no responsibility. That's crazy. Most of these fathers, they avoid emotional conversations with their children. And they don't facilitate a safe place for their children to discuss their feelings. I didn't do this always. Like I said, there is no perfect parent. This job doesn't come with a manual. But you know, there's a saying that some, some more than others, some more than most. I'm realizing now, and so is my daughter, that I was the more than, more than most. Because we have so many people here who are void. When I say I'm more than most because I can I can admit not only can I admit I can look at my uh uh uh, uh absenteeism or I can look at my uh, relationship with my offspring objectively and and make sure I can con con uh, continue to check the list and keep my thumb on their pulse. I think a lot of y'all don't understand how important y'all roles are. Somebody said, uh, well, how do you know your, when your dad doesn't love you? Let me tell you, he's disrespectful to you. He gives you the silent treatment. He screams and he threats. He has substance misuse issues. He doesn't want you to grow up. He has violent outbursts. He provides conditional love. Now, a lot of us as parents at one time or another, if we was to be honest, may have had problems in one of these areas or your parents had problems in one of these areas. But it wasn't no Oprah back then, so you know nobody talked about this stuff. How many parents of old was vis disrespectful to us, called us names, screamed and threatened us at us? And then in turn, that's what we learned. And we may have subjected our children to the same shit. And then we got the nerve, the nerve. 
to look at them and their behavior and not look at us and our parenting? Or what seeds did we plant? What foundational blocks did we build for their little foundations? I mean, a child is supposed to be psychologically hurt when you didn't have a relationship with their mother and they see you as um, I see you on the weekend, dad. And you are never able to have the emotional conversation without calling her mother funky bitches and things like that. How, how do you think that's so confusing for that daughter? When your father uses you to, um, To really be like a referee in between you, between him and your mother's relationship. All the garbage he feel about the mother he dumps on you. And she in turn, the garbage that she feel about him dumps on her on you too. The most psychologically damaging thing you can say to a child is a lie that they later found out was not true. I mean, y'all, I think that until we understand just how damaged we are from slavery, and all this toxic behavior as parents, all we doing is running around having kids and thinking that, oh yeah, I can afford them, I can afford them. That's all that happened on the plantation. That's all. That's all that happened. And because we haven't evolved much from that, I think all of us would be more uh, um, better parents if we would look at the negative impact that our behavior had on our sons as well as our daughters. How us not seeing the world and love through their mother's eyes or their father's eyes is damaging to them. And when you spread your seeds far and few between, those kids are going to grow up. And you a fool if you think that they're never going to confront you emotionally. Um, l- linguistically. Um, and, and then you got the nerve to get mad about it. I don't know. I, I want to ask y'all out there, those of y'all who were raised by a father or who had multiple women and children by women all over the place. And uh, maybe for some of y'all guys, it didn't bother y'all. Maybe some of y'all that are honest <laughs> that had to think about it. I won't use the word honest because a lot of y'all haven't thought about it. But once somebody sits you down, y'all go through the motions as 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 guys. But if 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 you just sit down for a minute and get in touch with what feels, not don't cry, don't cry, boys, don't cry, none of that kind of shit. Sit down for a minute and get in touch with what feels like just a human being, or regardless of your gender, and then start thinking how you felt. When your dad had another chick around the corner, another woman who had kids, or he didn't do nothing for y'all, but he did something for the kids around the corner. Um, you didn't you didn't grow up in a house where your father was the only father. And how does that feel? And how did it feel? 
us as, as siblings, did y'all say, well, well, my daddy come, or oh, this ain't none of your daddy. Uh, my daddy going to bring me some, and then your dad come and get one, don't get the other. That type of shit. If you be honest and leave your comment below, you know, we can really have a conversation about this. But if we don't, we can't ever heal from as far as from uh, we can't evolve from plantation behavior. So with that being said, I know you loud y'all ain't gonna like that, but if you like what you hear, please like, subscribe, and share. Cause I'm not saying what I'm saying to make y'all bitter or us bitter for that matter. It's just my opinions. And I'm saying it to make us better, not bitter. I'll see you in the next one.